last question for the retreat is, when we say the nature of being is peace, happiness, and joy, could that be misinterpreted as other appearances that being might take? For instance, like if sadness or grief arises, that that is not being, meaning there's nothing outside of being, right? It might take several appearances, but um, so I understand the nature of it is being joy and um, happiness, but could that be misinterpreted that as those other things are not being? Uh, it, it could be, and you're, you're quite right, it would be a mistake to, to, to believe. So you, you, you're absolutely right, everything, everything is an, an appearance of being or consciousness. Because aware being or consciousness is the only, the only thing, which is of course not a thing, the only reality that is present for anything to be the appearance of. Everything that appears in the movie is an appearance of the screen, because the screen is the only thing there for anything in the movie to be an appearance of. So you're absolutely right. Sorrow, loneliness, anxiety, it, it, it's all a, an appearance of being. When we experience peace or joy or love, we're experiencing being unfiltered, unfiltered through the sense of separation. If the same being is filtered through the sense of separation, it's experienced as sorrow or loneliness. It's still the same being, ultimately, that's being experienced, or that it is, that it is experiencing itself. But peace and joy and, and love, um, happiness is like um, the analogy I sometimes Use not a very good analogy in California, better in Oxford, but if you imagine a, a, a gray sky, just all gray clouds, you know, and 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 then a, a little a little patch of blue, the clouds part, a little patch of blue opens up. Well, if you'd never seen a sky before, you'd think that the natural condition of the sky was gray, and the blue was a, a, a blue cloud, a, a temporary blue appearance. Well, happiness is like the patch of blue sky. It seems to be a feeling that alternates with other feelings, such as sorrow. Some, some blue clouds, some gray clouds. But it, it's not like that. Happiness is, is, a, is a parting in the mind. The, the, the gray clouds are the mind, thoughts and feelings. And it's true, they're also made of the sky. But when, the, when there's a parting of thoughts and feelings, when thoughts and feelings subside, the essential nature of the sky, the, the blue sky, shines through. It seems to be, at first sight, you could be forgiven for thinking that the experience of happiness was just one more feeling amongst numerous other feelings. It's not. It's the background. It's the nature of being. So the blue is the nature of the sky. The grey is also the sky, but it's a, it's a veiling of the essential nature of the sky. So, like the, like the blue sky, there's never the absence of the blue sky. There's the veiling of the blue sky, or the shining of the blue sky, but never its absence. So happiness is like that, peace is like that. Peace is the, the nature of being when it is not conditioned by thoughts and feelings. It's always there, but it's sometimes veiled by the grey clouds of thoughts and feelings. Yeah, that's the part I have a question on, meaning um, the veiling of its essential nature by something else, like a cloud, makes it seem like there is something separate from being. Exactly. So it, that's why I like your screen movie analogy, or it works slightly better for me, because there isn't an outside thing unveiling you're, it. So you're when right. sadness happens, for instance, sadness is being, there's nothing veiling it. That's just, in that instance, the form or shape being is assuming, correct? Like there's you're, nothing You're, you're, you're absolutely it. right. And you're, you're, you're right that the screen analogy is more accurate than the sky analogy. It's, it, it, it's closer. I use it often because it's one of the, one of the very best. Um, a hologram is even better, but we tend not, we don't yet have holograms, so you have to work too hard to but we're all looking at screens all day long, so it, 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 it's easy. 
Um, yes, you're absolutely right. The landscape in the movie doesn't really veil the screen because you understand it. All that's there is the screen. There's nothing apart from the screen. So what is it in the landscape that seems to make it veil the screen? It's our belief that the landscape is a landscape. If we believe that the if we forget we're watching a movie, if we're so immersed in it that we that we think the landscape is a real landscape, that belief will seem to veil the screen. We'll think we're seeing a real landscape and we'll completely lose sight of us seem to lose sight of the screen. So you, you're right, there's no real veiling. And therefore, there's no real ignorance. Mm. 